The purpose of the Fight in Me podcast is to provide a platform for our guests to share their personal journeys and how education has helped them overcome the challenges in life as to who they are today. Thanks for joining us for the second episode of the Fight in Me podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Willie E. Smith, Chancellor of Baton Rouge Community College. Today's guest is a student athlete and at BRCC. We are very proud of all of our athletes and the work that they do on and off the field. We are appreciative of their resilience, hard work, and dedication, exhibited daily in the classroom and study hall and during games. We have a talented group of student athletes who work with our coaches in developing their life skills needed to succeed in life. The student athlete that I will introduce soon is an international student, and we're excited that BRCC is an institution where everyone's dreams can come true. We're thrilled to have all of our international students here to learn and advance their knowledge. And I want to welcome them to our college, city, and state. We hope that BRCC provide all of you with opportunity to learn about our unique culture as we learn yours. My guest today is Verde Fontaine. Verde is both an international student and a student athlete on the Lady Bass basketball team who recently were named LCCAC Conference Champion. Verd, thanks for joining me today in the Fight in Me podcast. Thanks for having me. Tell us where you're from and what it was like growing up on an island. Okay, I'm from the Commonwealth of Dominica. It's a small island between Martinique and Guadeloupe. That's two French islands. Growing up on an island is like adventurous, I would say, because it's like no structure or anything like it's fun like we do a lot of outdoor activities because we're known as the nature island of the Caribbean so like we have waterfalls lakes beaches river and everything so we just like doing stuff outside basically like that's about it we have the beautiful beaches yeah and the shoreline uh, it's amazing being yeah. American and traveling to that part of the world in the yes. Caribbean, but you got to live that. I know you enjoyed that. Right? Loved it. Yeah. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about your high school experience. How was it in high school? The students and the teachers, the environment. Is it different than it is here now, being yes, in the States? Yes, like or? all high school is pretty much like structured. Like we wear like uniforms, like skirt, tie, blazers, and all of that. And it's like, it's like a different setup. Like we do everything like old school, like writing on the books. Like we don't usually have like access to like computers and stuff as much as y'all have out here. So it's different, I would say. And the teachers are like very understanding and all of that. Like, I think we have the same like periods. Like, you know, you have like first period, second period. We have all of that. And our high school only go up to like fifth grade. And then we do something at the end of the year called CXC. And after we've done this, we get our diploma and we can move to college or university if we like. So the Dominica, the culture is similar to ours in Louisiana, French Creole culture. And, yes. Uh, we have similar natural disasters like hurricanes. How is it going up in a hurricane on the island? I love to hear about that experience. It's tough. Because we were struck by a Category 5 hurricane. I think three years back, it was Hurricane Maria. Mm -hmm. We was out for, with power like for like months, no water, everything. We actually got stuff from the U.S. imported to our country. Then we had to like wash our clothes in our hands because no washing machine, all of that stuff. And then our food now, we had to cook like on the outside because like most house like was damaged and stuff. So we had something like a coal pot. We actually cooked our food in and all of that. And as time goes by, we started rebuilding the country and all of that good stuff. But it's getting better here. We are still rebuilding up to this day. Because I remember coming outside from my house after the hurricane. We are like, known for our greenness. It was actually like brown. No trees, nothing. Everything was just gone. It was horrible. But we're building and it's looking pretty good right now. 
I agree. You know, those are some of the similarities we have in our culture. Certainly the disasters that we don't want to never talk about are natural disasters when they occur, right? And you experience some of the same thing. I imagine going without power on an island. It's very stressful. You can't read. You can't plug your iPhone up or anything or whatever, right? And even today, we still got folks in Louisiana who still haven't fixed their home for Ida, Hurricane Ida. So we can share some of those similarities or whatever. So, yeah. Let's discuss your journey on what led you to be on CC, but also to be a student athlete. My journey, it's pretty funny because back home I actually played a sport called netball. It's like a female version of basketball. And then one of my coaches got in touch with me. It's like, you should play basketball, you should play basketball. I was like, nah, basketball's not for me. Basketball's not for me. Then I said, okay, I'm gonna give it a try. So then we started working out. So he was like, I'm gonna take some pictures and try to get you in some touch with some coaches out here. That's how we got in touch with Coach Lee. And then we started talking over the phone and Coach Lee was like, I like her jump shot and this and that. I could actually work with her. So then we started communicating like, probably like every day, trying to get me up here because it's a whole different like process to come into the United States. Like being from the Caribbean, you have to get like your student visa and all your paperwork. So we started working on our paperwork. I actually supposed to be here in January, but due to certain stuff, we couldn't get here in January. So we did August. So after I got like all my paperwork and stuff, I came up here and then I came to Louisiana like the 13th when we moved to our apartment and all that stuff. At first I was like nervous. I was like, I'm really up here, like, how is it going to be? Because, like, I knew nobody. Even if, like, Coach Lee and I talked over the phone, it's like face-to-face -face conversation. Like, I didn't know. So I was like, okay, I'm going to just be open-minded about it. Like, you know, go with the flow, be the best me I can be, and let's see what outcome I could get. Mm -hmm. At first, I was, like, shy because... Like I said before, I never played basketball before. I played netball, so it's like I had few experience. Then Coach Lee put me to the side one day and she started talking to me, telling me I have this potential, I could do this and that. Then we started working out after practice. Like we would practice in the morning, like as a regular team, and I would stay back and she would help me like work on my game and all of that stuff. Just made me feel like comfortable, I think, yeah. And then the teammates now, because of like my hard work, like they sort of like had a drive towards me. Like, yeah, like I want to be her friend because like she's so hardworking and stuff. So like it was easier to like build a bond with them through my hard work. As time goes by, it's like BRCC became like my home away from home because like everything came so naturally. Like all my relationships with everybody, like everybody I was so understanding, like you know, they just accepted me like for who I am and all of that good stuff. That's basically it. That's great. It's like you're finding your way around, you're interacting. Uh, have you chosen a major yet? Liberty Arts. Liberty Arts. Yeah. Why did you come to that conclusion? Is it just something that interests you in that area? In that yes, because it has a little of everything, you know? So yeah, that's basically it. So what, could you tell the audience or tell me and I got pretty much experience being a student athlete as well, but I love to hear your perspective being an international student coming to the state. What's your experience like being a student athlete? So being a student and being an athlete, what does your typical day look like? I feel like it's pretty much the same, but not like the same. Because like some things are just different. The school structure, different, like, you know, basically the same but not the same right because just like a different feeling like like the way I talk so like people have a hard time understanding like what I'm saying yeah. do you speak French Creole but Creole, not, yeah. Creole French yeah yeah I do yeah. It's great. but decide that it's pretty much like the same like you just have to like manage your time and all of that stuff while you go to school so you could be on the right page because if not you're gonna mean some waters. <laughs> yeah, right, it's understandable. So you're adapting now to the culture, you're adapting to your teammates, the environment in school. What are your challenges on the basketball court? I know you just 
learning and you're still working with Coach Lee to hone your skills. What do you find the most challenging in playing basketball? Footwork. Footwork, yes. Yeah, footwork and handling the ball a little bit because yeah. I got a problem with handling the ball. Yeah. But footwork because, you know, you got to make sure you do the correct spin move and all of that. Because I'm a post player, so I got to have good footwork for when I post up big in the post and all that good stuff. But if Coach Lee, we get in there. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I think uh, people look at your size and make yeah. reference to your ability. and You have to be mobile in your footwork uh, to increase your gain. So that's interesting. You guys had a great season, a winning season. Uh, you had a first round by. You advanced from the second round. You made it to the regional finals. Coach Lee was the coach of the year. As you look back, summarizing what was that experience like, uh, coming from a, an island, coming to a new culture, engaging in new teammates and a new coach, a new environment, and BRCC, new surrounding, and you he get here, you got success on your early year or your first year here. Summarize what that experience was like to you and to go through all that. It was just wonderful because, like I said, it's my first year here and we won a championship. So it's like, that's something I'm going to hold on for like forever because like, I'm going to tell everybody, first year at BRCC won LCA championship and you know, the experience was like just wonderful. It felt so unreal sometimes because I was like, some days we thought we couldn't do it and like, you know, we pushed through and we came out victorious. It's like a wonderful, so unreal experience, I would say. Yeah. You had a lot of fellow classmates that's gonna be leaving, going on to new adventures. So what standard have we set now? Uh, I imagine you're gonna be one of the new leaders now on the team or whatever. So what, is, what can we expect for next year? It's gonna be better next year because like, we know what's expected of us, and I think like we have the right tools. We just got to put in the work over the summer and come back and be much better than we was before. So I think we are going to keep our championship for next season okay. for sure. Great. We're going to hold you to that. So yeah. We look forward to celebrating and rooting for you and the rest of the team. So now you're putting your footwork, you put work in, you're developing, you're honing your skills. Are there anything off season that you do, any hobbies that you're interested in? Tell us about any hobbies or other things that interest you besides basketball or sports. It's a tough one. Cause all we do is talk about basketball. <laughs> but like we try to play like different sports. Like we did like beach volleyball and we played tennis. It's fun, but it's like we still come back to basketball at the end of the day. So and then we be having like cook-offs. So we challenge each other like to make some because like y'all food different from what I cook back home. So we be like cooking at the apartment and stuff like, you know, trying different foods to see what we really like. That's what, basically what, what are the different, what kind of food you like enjoy? I like like soups with like dumplings and stuff. Yeah. Louisiana cuisine is a little bit different on it's, something they eat here, huh? It's different, but not so much different, I find. Cause like, I could go to some restaurants and I could find like a Caribbean food. And I'd be like so amazed, like jerk chicken to the extent, yeah. So hearing your story, your transformation here at the college, what inspires Ver? What makes, motivate Ver to be the best that she can be? What inspires you? Growing up back then, it's like I knew what it was to have nothing. So now to actually have something is like breaking generation curses for my family, like, you know, I'm the first generation in my family to go to college and all of that stuff. So it's like, I'm setting the pace right now. Like, you know, everybody looking up to me, saying like, if Vert can do it, I can do it. Like, you know, so it's basically like breaking the curse. Like, I usually tell myself I'm destined for greatness, you know, because I want to be something great when I grow up. Great. So you'd be a role model uh, for folks back home in Dominican. Yes. You have any siblings? Yes. Uh, yeah, so I meant to look up to you. Uh, I'm actually the last, the little one. So oh. I have like nieces and nephews <laughs> and cousins looking up to me right now. Yeah. So have you determined or thought about or even venture out what does the future hold for Bird, Bird when you graduate from BRCC? Yeah, we're looking to play more basketball. <laughs> yeah. So did I hit WNBA? Hopefully so. We're working towards it. Great. If there's someone listening from your hometown 
and the Caribbean or any international student uh, that may be having some challenges or difficulties or haven't made their mind up to leave where they, where they, at, where they reside at, in the Caribbean or anywhere else in the world, what would you tell them about your experience, but also uh, the impact that BRCC provides for you? I would say it's okay to take like a big step in your life and to communicate with like the people like you're going to meet as much as possible. And when you get there, like it's okay to like tell them like your story so like they could understand where you're coming from and ways they could help you. Cause that's what helped me at BRCC because like I told my story, like, you know? So basically just tell your story and be you so people could actually understand you and could help you. Because if you don't speak up, like, they will not know, like, okay, she's having this problem, this problem. So it's like, speak up and just be yourself, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. You, you talked about it. I think that uh, your personality fit right in with the culture here, the team, the coaches. Yeah. Uh, but you imagine you have other folks from your island or other areas who just won't fit in. They're just different. Or whatever and so I think you talk about perseverance continue to be who you are so you remain who you are yeah that's your personality you express it today yes that you're in the Caribbean yes oh, yeah. that's basically me is there one lasting thing that you want the audience to know about you uh, or the plans on the future or uh, and what BRCC can do to support you that's any one thing that you want to discuss with the audience before we close BRCC has like invested in me to become like a better person, like setting me on like my career path. Like this is the start right now. So it started at BRCC, like, cause they gave me like the right tools I needed, you know, to just go out there and be who I actually want to be. Thank you for sharing that. And there you have it folks, we're with Vera Fontaine. Uh, you heard us tremendous story being from the Caribbean, the Dominica, uh, her dreams or passion to potential playing in WNBA. And BRCC, we hold ourselves to be powerful in the work that we do to support everyone's dreams. And whether it's, whether it's to be a WNBA, to be a lawyer, a doctor, or someone is in the process, technician, field, or nurse, come here for the opportunity that we have for you, and we're going to support you on your success. So, again, thank you for joining us today on this Fighting Me podcast.